Hello, hello, my name is Rachel and today's video is a little different. So today I'm basically just trying to provide any help that I can to the community that I'm able to reach. This video was mostly inspired by just all the amazing outpouring of support I've seen um, really across the world, but particularly in relation to children's literature. I'm literally just covered in like free resources that everybody has been raining down on us as educators lately and it's just been overwhelming. So I thought this is what I can offer to the world. So I'm gonna do my little part and try to pass on some knowledge and hopefully it'll help. So um, I am based out of Ohio and here we are um, currently homebound. Um, we have a lot of things shut down across the state due to the pandemic. Um, all of our schools are shut down for three weeks. Um, we are just ending the first week of being at home and all of our teachers are trying to kind of um, wrangle some materials together to send home for the kids to continue learning. Um, I know that we are not alone in this. Across the country we're seeing a trend um, with people staying at home, people working from home, all the social distancing, all of the stuff. You know what's happening. I don't need to tell you. But um, what I have been doing, um, and if you're not aware, I am a school librarian, so I am working from home right now. Um, our schools are shut down, like I said, here in the state of Ohio. Um, so I have been just trying to curate and wrangle all these free materials and try to get them into the hands of people that can use them. So I decided just to hop on here really quick and share some of my big takeaways that I have um, just kind of found over the course of my week of gathering materials for work. So my first recommendation, this these all work um, for you if you are a teacher and you are working with other people's kids trying to promote distance learning, but these also work for you if you are currently staying at home with your child who is also trying to learn from home. So basically anywhere there's kids involved, all of these things can hopefully be helpful for you. So my first recommendation um, is to use your public library. All of the public libraries right now I'm sure are just chomping at the bit to help you out like that's what librarians really like to do they like to match you with perfect resources for you to continue whatever it is your goal is whether it's learning or whatever so definitely reach out to your public library if you don't have a card to your public library shame on you but it's probably okay. I know that a lot of our local libraries here are offering um, an opportunity to virtually reach out to them and get a virtual card that is only good temporarily for their digital services. So please look into that. Um, with that, you'll get access to probably the most well-known ebook audiobook platform, which is called Overdrive. A lot of people use the app called Libby to access Overdrive. And again, this is going to be your major audiobooks and ebooks. However, with the huge influx of people People using these resources there is going to be quite a bit of a wait list for the material so keep that in mind but if your library has an app called Hoopla then you are in luck while this does not have the huge amount of material available on it that Libby slash Overdrive does Hoopla has a ton of content it has audiobooks ebooks graphic novels and comics, TV shows, music, it has it all. Now, the the caveat here is that there may be a limit of how many you can check out in a month, uh, but then once the month starts again, like at the beginning of April coming up soon, you'll have your amount reset. Um, you need to check with your library to see what that amount is. I know depending on what library you use around here, it could be anywhere from like six to 10 items that you can check out. So just be careful with that. But the amazing thing about Hoopla, especially if you're a teacher, is that there is unlimited access to the materials available on this platform. Meaning that if you wanna do a book club or if you wanna have a book discussion or you need to teach a particular book, as long as you pick something that's available on Hoopla, all of your kids will be able to check it out at the same time. You're not gonna be dealing with hold lists and everybody's struggling to get a copy they'll be able to get it um, from Hoopla. So keep that in mind. I really like to push Hoopla because I just think it's such a great platform. It doesn't have all the books on there. You're gonna have to be a little bit more selective, but it's gonna give a really great collective access for um, your students and then for your own kids if you are teaching from home. Your public library also is going to have other digital tools such as um, probably digital archives, maybe newspapers that are available digitally. Um, I know ours is offering genealogy at a like distance wise because normally you have to come into the library but they're all closed right now so I think uh, there's a ton of things you can do from the library including research databases so if you are looking to do research and need scholarly journals peer-reviewed journals 
definitely check their databases for Academic Search Premier and like ERIC. All those resources should be available on your public site, as well as your school library. If you're a teacher, reach out to your school librarian. If you're a parent, reach out to the school and see what resources your librarians would recommend. They know a lot of what's going to be happening locally to help you out. Um, also, I would like to point out that you can have more than one library card. Um, some people don't know this, which I think is funny because I have so many. But like, for instance, in the state of Ohio, as long as I'm living in the state of Ohio, I can have a library card to pretty much any city. So I am Cincinnati based, but I could have a Cleveland library card. So what this means for you right now is if you live in a really small town and maybe they don't have a ton of resources, definitely feel free to reach out to your local big town, uh, some town locally that uh, might have more resources. So if you get if you live in a small town, maybe reach out to the next biggest city and see what they have to offer if they'd be willing to give you a digital card. So keep that in mind. Now, for students specifically in Ohio, we have what's called Info Ohio. And I'm going to leave all the links down below, so don't worry about any of that. Um, but we have Info Ohio, which provides a just a plethora of resources for students in the state of Ohio. They use like geolocation login, which I don't understand, but it's pretty cool. Basically, as long as you're in the state of Ohio, your internet access should pretty much allow you in without a username and password, but your school librarians can give you that if you need it. Um, it's going to provide you audiobooks, ebooks, research databases, articles, online encyclopedias, research tips, all of it. All of it's going to be on there. And teachers, it also provides um, like lesson support. You can drill down and find different things you can implement into your lessons, especially now that you're trying to shift to digital learning. So definitely be using Info Ohio. And if you are not in Ohio, there is more than likely going to be something like that for you. Info Ohio is just our collection of resources funded by the state that our students are allowed to use. So reach out to your local librarians, reach out to your school librarians and see what you have in your state. There's probably something awesome that you have as well. And then Beyond all that, that exists really all the time, we have just a plethora of free things happening right now because everybody is just wanting to do their part to help, which again, is just so awesome. So um, you need to know about Audible. You cannot go just regular Audible site. That's not gonna work, um, but there is a link. If you go to stories.audible.com, which I'll link below, it's gonna give you access to a handful of audiobooks for free immediately, no card required, no sign up required. You're just gonna get the audiobooks. Um, these are gonna be a collection of um, some classics, some newer stuff. There's some great content on there. I actually just shared out an audiobook that um, I had been wanting to read to my kids uh, had we been meeting in person anyway. So good audiobooks there. Check it out. Same thing with Scribd. Um, if you go to Scribd, they're offering a free 30-day trial. So you can do that, but you will need a credit card. However, there is a link circulating and I will try to pin it down and, and link it below to where you can get around that sign up and go straight into their content. Um, they have some audiobooks and ebooks. These tend to be though more for like a high school level. So keep that in mind. So Audible and Scribd for sure right now. Um, also Epic Book. It's at getepic.com. It's fantastic. I use this all the time. Um, typically, the way this works, though, is that your classroom teacher sets up a class and then they can monitor it or not. You can use guest passwords. That's all up to the teacher, but they have a login depending on if it's individual or a guest password. And all of the students then can access uh, the materials during the school day for free. But they've extended that now that they can kind of access it all the time now um, from home with that password. So reach out to your student's teacher and let them know about Get Epic if you would like free access to that. Um, I do know that as a parent, you can subscribe. I don't really know how much it is because I've never had to look into it because teachers and librarians have free access, but it's not a huge amount, I don't think. So it might be worth looking into, but you can get it for free right now through your school. So reach out to your school for Get Epic. Um, another website you definitely should be checking out is called Wonderopolis. And basically it's a collection of all these wonders that kids have had and submitted. Um, so whatever you think of and you'd wanna know about, you submit to this website 
and they um, let you vote for it. And then like the most upvoted ones, typically they answer, they collect a bunch of resources. They usually have like a video, a couple of pictures, some um, vocab words all embedded in an article to tell you about this wonder. Recently, they've had one on the coronavirus. So you can check that out with your family um, or like weird ones like do animals dream when they sleep and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. Um, they post a new topic every day. So that's something you can keep revisiting and it's always for free. Next up, if you are a fan of podcasts, the website Kids Listen is a platform for children's podcasts. So they have things um, for the lower ages such as like story times, um, all the way up to basically story time for like upper elementary, lower middle school level, um, where it's essentially almost like a book just told in like a serialized version. So definitely check out um, some of the podcasts on Kids Listen. Um, some of them are scientific, some of them are fictional, some of them um, are about learning, some of them are about literacy, some of them are just for fun. So definitely check them out. It could be a fun thing to do to have like your own story time based uh, in a podcast format. There's also several um, creators right now um, in the, the kid lit circle that are making content and it's fantastic. I love it. Um, one of them is Jarrett Krasowska. He has written the Lunch Lady series, which we love at our school. And he also wrote Hey Kiddo, which has won like all of the awards. So um, he is offering basically art classes online every day. Um, I'll leave his information linked down below, but I believe he's doing it on his a YouTube channel um, so that you can watch them all the time. But he'll come on and do them every, uh, every afternoon. At a certain time, you can check in with him and do an art class. Similarly, Mo Will Willems, which if you don't know Mo Willems and you have children, what are you doing with your life? He's written the pigeon books and the elephant and piggy books and it's Mo Willems. So he is doing like a doodle time around noon. And I believe they were originally doing it during like a FaceTime or a Facebook live, but it, I don't know. I think they now are housing them on a different website. I feel like it was like a museum. So just be aware that they're not, your, your kids are not going to be interested in like the entire um, YouTube channel, but that YouTube channel is housing the Mo Willems collection. So they'll be able to do uh, drawings with Mo Willems. Next up, you need to know about Dan Santat. If you have not read a Dan Santat book, you need to get on that. He is like the king of children's literature for me right now. I am just in love with his content. Um, he's an author and an illustrator. Um, so he's got quite a bit of books that he's at least worked on in one way or another. Um, recently, it was After the Fall, which he was both the author and the illustrator of. Love, love, love. But anyway, on Instagram, he is updating every day on what he is calling his Danademic. I think. <laughs> and it's like a survival guide right now for our current situation. And it's amazing. Oh, you need to check out Dan Santat. Um, I'm also going to give a shout out to my local uh, zoo. That's the Cincinnati Zoo. They are doing um, what they're calling uh, home safari. And basically every day they're going to take you um, and introduce you and teach you about a different animal in the zoo. Again, I think this originally was going to be like a Facebook live situation, but uh, they were just kind Kind of inundated with um, the demand. So they're storing everything on their website as well. Um, so you can watch live, but if you miss it or whatever, you can access it on their website along with materials to go with um, the presentation. Um, some other just web-based things that are available all the time, I would recommend Kidlit TV website and YouTube. They interview a lot of uh, children's authors. They have a lot of read alouds. They have like draw alongs with illustrators and it's really great. Um, two people who read aloud online and do it pretty well. The first one is Storytime with Ryan and Craig. They are crazy. So just be aware of that. They're goofy as all get out. But I do like them just in the context of having um, males reading to children. You don't see that too often, I feel like. So it's always great to promote it. And they read a lot of good books. Um, they currently, I think, um, have a very large backlist, but they're going live on Instagram. I think it is daily for a while. Um, and then the other one is My Storybook. She reads, I think, one book every week. And she does a very interactive storytelling where she questions um, the listener often and makes them reflect on what they're reading. And then usually has a craft that ties in with it. Um, another thing you should be aware about is AudioSync. If you sign up for AudioSync, 
um, as a teenager, you will get free audiobooks all summer. Um, two books every week all summer long. And they're starting this now on April 30th. I think it's a little bit early this year, uh, considering everything that's happening. So starting April 30th, you will receive two audiobooks via, I think, email every week all summer until like the end of July. So definitely check into that. Um, I would also recommend that basically you just follow anything that you like. That's my last big recommendation. Get on Instagram and on Facebook, whatever social media you prefer, and follow authors you like, illustrators you like, uh, bookstores, local bookstores, um, your local libraries. A lot of these people are going to be offering things online just sporadically. I've seen over the past couple of days several um, YA authors. They'll, they'll publish today that they're going live Live tomorrow at like one o'clock. So you'll be able to catch all of these little events that are popping up all over the interwebs while everybody's sequestered at home if you are following them on social media. So like I said, any authors, creators, illustrators, anybody at all um, in businesses, local businesses dealing with books and literature, I would follow them on social media so that you catch any announcements they have about story times and events and live chats. So Whew, that was a lot of information for you. Like I said, I'll have a bunch of links down below, but I hope you find something helpful here. Um, and if you have any questions about anything I said, just let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, this is what I have to offer. So hopefully, like I said, you can find something that's useful. And I hope you are staying safe and staying healthy and just taking care of yourself and your family. So stay safe and thanks for watching.